If your fiscal year does not start on January 1st, then you need to know about the most important date of your life. It's going to help you analyze your data accurately by fiscal year, quarter, month, week, and even day. To create your calendar table in Power BI, where your fiscal period does not start on 1 January, first head over to the Table View tab. As you can see, our sales data is already imported. Click on Table Tools, then New Table. In our formula bar, we'll name this table Fiscal Calendar Table, equals, and let's type calendar, and we want calendar auto, so let's select that. Insert a close bracket. Now, why use calendar auto? Because this function generates a single column of dates automatically based on all the dates in our model. Let's hit enter, and we have our dates. Let's rename this column to original date, just for clarity. Here's the thing though, calendar auto assumes a calendar year starting in January and ending in December. But what if our fiscal period does not start in January? This is where things get interesting. Let's add a new column and call it fiscal date. This will now be the most important date of your life. This calculation is crucial for the rest of your fiscal calculations. It's the backbone of everything we'll be doing so we need to get it right. Insert the equal sign and use the edate function. Why edate, you ask? Edate is perfect for this scenario because it allows us to shift dates by a specific number of months. Why do we need to shift dates? Because in our first calculation, we used calendar auto, and as we know, it defaults to 1 January. However, in this example, our fiscal start date is 1 April 2023. So to make Power BI recognize 1 April 2023 as the start date, we need to treat it as 1 January 2024. So eDate will help us do this. Let's remove this open bracket and reinsert it so that we can see what eDate requires. It requires two arguments, the start date, which is our original date. So let's type that, and the IntelliSense brings it up. So let's select it and insert a comma. And the second argument is the number of months to shift from the start date. Let's start by entering one for the number of months, insert the close bracket and hit enter. Notice how it returns February for January. This is because eDate shifts each date forward by the number of months you specify. So our fiscal period begins on 1 April 2023, and this is nine months away from 1 January 2024. So let's change this one to nine and press enter. Let's filter the original date column for after 31 March 2023 and sort ascending and our fiscal date column returns January 2024. Let's perform one more test and scroll down to March 2024 as that would be the end of our fiscal period that started on the 1st of April 2023 and our fiscal date correctly shows December 2024 as that's nine months away from March 2024. So now that we have this extremely important date, let's see how else we can use it to create the rest of our fiscal periods. Next, let's add another column and call it fiscal year. Let's use the year function to extract the year from the date that we give it. Insert the open bracket and insert the open square bracket. Select the fiscal date column, insert the close bracket, and hit enter. And we have our years extracted from the fiscal date column. Let's perform a few checks. April 2023 falls in the 2024 fiscal year, which is correct. And let's scroll down to April 2024, which should be the start of our next fiscal period, and it correctly shows the 2025 fiscal year, which is also correct. Next, let's add a new column and call this fiscal quarter. 
insert equals, and let's use the quarter function to return our quarters. But this function will also return the default quarter months, so we will have to use the fiscal date column as it already shifts our dates to the fiscal period that we require, which in this example is the 1st of April 2023. Insert the close bracket and hit enter. We can see it already shows quarter 1 for April. Let's perform another check by filtering for quarter 3. And it correctly shows October, November and December for Q3. Next, let's add a new column and call this fiscal month number equals. And we're going to use the month function to extract the month number from the fiscal date column. As remember, this column has our adjusted dates. But before we get to that, did you know that only 9% of you watching are subscribed? If you're getting value from this video, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. Insert the close bracket and press enter. It correctly shows April as its month one in our fiscal year. And if we filter for month five, for example, it correctly shows August as this would be month five in our fiscal year. Now let's add a new column and call this fiscal week number equals and let's use the week num function. This function returns the week number for the year that we give it. Let's insert the open square bracket and the IntelliSense brings up our list of columns that we've created. Let's select fiscal date as the date argument, insert a comma. And now we need to select one of these numbers. These numbers are called the return type. I will show you what their impact is in the next steps. Let's use one for now. Remember the close bracket and press enter and we have the numbers of our week. The first week of April 2023 starts on a Saturday, which is the first of the month and the week ends on Friday the 7th. But wait, Friday isn't in week one. It's in week two, which is incorrect. This is the impact of the return type. What the return type does is tell Power BI which day starts the week. To understand this better, we need to go to the Microsoft Learn site. And under the week num function, there is this table showing the return types. It shows the default value as one, which means the week will start on a Sunday. For our fiscal period starting the 1st of April, 2023, the week starts on a Saturday, which means we need to use 16 as the return type. So let's go back to our calendar table and use 16 and press enter. And it now shows that our week one starts on a Saturday and ends on a Wednesday. But this is still incorrect. So what should we do? If you guessed we need to look at the most important date of our life, that is the fiscal date. You were right. We know that our fiscal period starts on the 1st of April 2023, which we've adjusted to the 1st of January 2024. And the 1st of January 2024 falls on a Monday. So if we look at the return type table again, Monday is returned by 2, so let's use that. And let's filter for the 2024 fiscal year, as well as fiscal week 1. And now the first week of our fiscal period is correct. It starts on Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023, and ends on Friday, the 7th of April, 2023. If we perform another check for week 2, it correctly starts on Saturday, April 8th, and ends on Friday, April 14th. So you should always base the return type on the adjusted date used in the fiscal date column. Let's clear all our filters. Now add a new column and let's call this short fiscal year. We're going to use the write function. Let's insert the open square bracket and select our fiscal year, insert a comma. And as we want the last two characters from our fiscal year column, let's type two, insert a close bracket and hit enter. And we have the last two digits of the year. Now we could type FY in double quotations and the ampersand sign to identify our fiscal year. But this calculation is reused in other calculations, 
So let's cut the FY and ampersand. Let's add a new column and name it FYYY. Let's paste the code that we just cut. And let's use the short fiscal year column and press enter. Let's create the fiscal year and fiscal week column. Use the FYYY column, insert the ampersand, and add WK in double quotations to indicate week. And add another ampersand and select the fiscal week number column. Press enter. We need a space between the FY and week number. So in our formula bar, let's insert a space after the first double quotation of WK. And our format looks much better. I've added more fiscal periods in this calendar that I haven't covered in this video. If you're interested in the complete set of formulas, plus the Power BI file and dataset with the charts already created for you, and the guide showing you how to create all the formulas, please check the description or the first comment. Now, if you want to go deeper into understanding the difference between a measure and a calculated column, then you should definitely check out this video next.